I get inspired by after I've had heartbreak mm -hmm. and or something we've hit rock like after the strike everything's like at rock bottom and then you're like I have all these ideas I'm just gonna do this and it kind of you can nowhere else to go but up Welcome back to another episode of First Rounds on Me, and today we have a true powerhouse in our presence, oh. Nazanin Noah. She is a brilliant Iranian-American actress, model, writer, and activist who has dedicated a lot of her time to educating the masses on the repression and subjugation of women under the Islamic P Republic. Today, we implore our listeners to sit back and absorb the wealth of information she has to share, all while getting her thoughts on dating, familial influences on relationships, and of course, playing a few rounds of how well do you know yourself and first thing that comes to mind. Nazanin, welcome to the show, babe. Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. Hi, Nazanin. Hi. How are you? How's your day going? So far, so good. It's good. Yeah. I know you had a little hiccup with the Uber driver, but yeah, you made he it past. Yeah, he picked up a call as we were driving and I was like, I'm going to be late. And he slow. he couldn't multitask. Most men can't. And he <laughs> slowed, but it's true. But he slowed down and he was like on the call and I was like, oh, if you could just go two more blocks, I'll almost be there. Yeah, oh but we God. made it. So that's good. I love it. Yeah, love it's it. so frustrating. Um, so as Hannah knows, I, I, I rarely get questions to ask. Okay. But I'm very fascinated in you as a guest because always fascinating the dating social aspect of things, but you have such a unique perspective on your activism, especially with Iran. Mm -hmm. Did I say that correctly? You did. They said, don't say Iran. If yes. you say Iran, they're going to... You're gonna, we'll you're be like, oh, he knows points. his stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay. But how did how did all it start? Obviously, I know briefly about the history of Iran and, mm -hmm. you know, what Iranians who come to America, kind of why they came to America. Yeah. But how did it all start for you? Um, activism work? You just, or in yeah, life? yeah, just the activism and, like, what was your journey? Like, I, I assume, were you born in Iran? I was actually born in America. Okay. Yeah, so, and my parents have a little bit of a different story than a lot of other Iranian uh, immigrants, but they got married in Iran in 1975, and that was before the Islamic Revolution, which was in 79. And their plan was to come to America, go to university, they both studied civil engineering, and then they were going to go back because under the Shah, um, there was all this new uh, infrastructure that was being built, and they needed more engineers. So my parents were like, great, we'll go become engineers, come back to Iran, life will be great. Um, and then while they were here, the revolution happened, and then the Iran-Iraq war started, and then I was born. Um, and my family in Iran, I mean, of course, and my parents were watching everything that's going down. They're like, oh, this doesn't seem like somewhere we want to go back to, unfortunately, or that we should. And then they had a daughter. And, you know, most of the family members um, in Iran were like, you should stay there, especially because you have a daughter, because things are now much different. Women are going to be under repression and it's not a place for her to grow up. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, um, it's like I'm not supposed to be here technically is how I look at it sometimes. Um, but yeah, I was born in Arlington, Virginia. So right outside of Washington, D.C. I was always uh, very proud of my background. And even though I grew up in a predominantly white well, at first I grew up in a predominantly um, black and has Hispanic neighborhood. And so our apartment complex had immigrants from all types of countries and, and Iranians as well that my parents became friends with. And we're all still friends to this day. The kids all grew up together. <laughs> so I had a very cool upbringing. But my middle school and high school experiences were a little bit different. It was predominantly white. And there wasn't a lot of, you know, color in our school, especially people from the Middle East. And so there was a lot of teasing and bullying and all that kind of stuff, a little bit of racial slurs here and there. So that's, but what it always made me do was double down on my background. Like I was like, oh, you think this isn't cool? I'm going to show you that it is fucking cool. And, um, my parents also raised me and my sister within these families that we grew up with, too, these other Iranian families. Like, they were like, we're going to raise you Iranian. You're not American. You know, you can't sleep over. It doesn't matter what Jenny's <laughs> doing. Like, you can't go to this party. You can't date. Which I understand, uh, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, And um, some of the things that I heard happen in my high school, I'm like, it's a good thing they didn't let me go to that party. Because <laughs> I don't know if that's an, uh, strictly an Iranian thing. I don't think Italians it is. Italians, too. Yes. I think it's just Same immigrant thing. children yeah, yeah. definitely have that. Um shared experience. But um, yeah, and I, I, when I started doing some work in, uh, I was, I, I would create things for my YouTube channel. And one of my main goals was to educate and inform people and not even like educate, like I'm telling you, you know, what to think or do, uh, but more like, I want to show you the other side of what you just, you only see on the news, the terrible things that the Islamic Republic does. And a lot of people conflate the people of Iran with the regime. And I always try to show the uh, the actual people and the mm. humanity and th that we have so many commonalities. And, you know, so that is, has always been a um, 
that's always been important to me in, in anything I do or in my work. And then as far as the activism stuff, you know, I started using my social media to spread awareness um, over the last however many years. One of the last times I was in Iran was in 2009, and there was a big election that year, it was, and the Green Movement was happening then. Um, and uh, that was, there was a huge protest movement that erupted from there and it was quashed immediately like the regime always does, like killing protesters and people getting under house arrest, detained, torture, execution, stuff like that. And um, I started, I just remember, I was like, you know, I, then I didn't have a big platform and I was like, well, I just have to talk about this as much as I can or whatever opportunity I have to like inform people of what's really going on. Um, and then the last few years ramped up and I think part of it was also because I started working in the Persian language market for media and I was exposed to so many more people from inside Iran, not just, you know, maybe your family members of people you know, but receiving messages and information and then just social media shows you videos now live of what's going mm -hmm. on. Um, I, I kind of took on this, no, now I really have to use my platform mm -hmm. to show the world like the real, the real, um, what real life is like under this regime. And so I just kind of ramped it up over the last few years. And then Woman Life Freedom started in September 2022 with the murder of this young Kurdish Iranian woman, Gina Masa Amini. Um, and so her death was the catalyst for this newest wave of protest movement, which it's it, it, it starts with this thing and it's a powder keg moment. It starts with the death of this girl, but really it's also about 45 years now of repression and brutality and a theocracy. It's a dictatorship. You know, they're murderers. And so people pour out into the streets because they want the regime to change. They don't want to live in a theocracy. They want a secular democracy. And um, that's kind of, you know, what all Iranians in the diaspora have tried to do over the last couple of years, especially, is really push that narrative forward. So the West and everybody else understands, like, you should be on the side of the people, you right. should help them get rid of this regime. And uh, I, I think from what I saw, the last protest because of Masa was the biggest, right? Because like you said, when a protest would start, it would probably be quelled pretty quickly, but yeah. this one lasted longer and was stronger. Yeah, it was the biggest threat to the regime in history, um, and or in recent history. And the thing that was different about this one too is that it spread to all the provinces because if I remember correctly, the Green Movement in 2009, a lot of those protests were kind of relegated to Tehran, to the capital. This one spread everywhere. So everybody was participating. People, weren't, workers are on strike. I mean, there people still now are, uh, you know, committing acts of civil disobedience by women are taking off their headscarves, which is illegal and punishable by, you know, detainment, imprisonment, fines. As we saw, you could be killed for it. Um, and they're walking around as much as they can until they get stopped um, without these headscarves. You know, people are defying, I'm sure we'll get into this, defying the immodesty and immorality laws by like holding hands with their significant other in public, things that you're not supposed to do. Um, I remember one of the last times I was there, I laughed really loud in a restaurant and my aunt was like, you have to like, you have to keep it down a little bit, you know? Really? Yeah. Not that they're going to come arrest you for laughing, but the fact you're like, as a woman, you're drawing attention to yourself and it's loud and you have to be like, you know, everything has to be quiet and meek. And it was just like, you know, and your family feels bad because they don't want you there. They want, you know, you're there to have fun and see your family mm. and, and they feel bad that you have to deal with that. But I'm like, I, you shouldn't feel bad for me. I'm, I leave you guys. Yeah. I feel bad that you guys have to live under this regime when you deserve the same freedoms everybody else does. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I think, like you said, the news is the worst way to get information. And the small portion of people who look deeper than the news, I think, uh, see the passion behind, like when these young girls in school yeah. were kind of all protesting, like these young women, and they knew what was going to happen to them. So brave. I was like, wow, this is, it's, it's like a movement that gives you the chills, where it's like these young girls who are not scared of anybody, Yeah, know that they're going to get in trouble, yeah. and this movement is so big that they don't care. I mean, there's videos of these young schoolgirls. They're like 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. They're shouting down the dean of the school, like the equivalent of the dean of the school. There's videos of them throwing things at him, and they actually chased him out because he, they come and they try to give you this propaganda about why you should be modest and why we have to wear the headscarf and da-da-da-da. And these girls, the young people of Iran especially, they have had it. They're... They're Gen Z. They grew up with social media. Mm -hmm. They have VPNs to see what's going on in the world. They're on TikTok. They're on Instagram. They know what the world is like. They know what they're being kept from, and they don't want to take it anymore. So they are 
infinitely more courageous than I am because I'm like, I don't know if I could do that at 14 years old, knowing that I could get arrested oh, yeah. or worse could happen to me. Um, they, they, they captured some teenage girls during the protests and it's on record after, you know, CNN and various other news agencies did uh, deep dive investigations. These girls were raped, sexually assaulted, thrown from buildings, um, you know, and this regime doesn't ever make it easy for you to get the body of your loved one. They could prevent you from mourning. They come break up funeral ceremonies because they don't want these people to be looked at as heroes because they know that's a threat to their power as well. Um, so these young girls, I mean, the people in general, but these young girls were treated, I mean, their last moments are horrible. That's, that's why it's so fascinating. Like, I really love meeting people from these parts of the world because I feel like you those type of people you appreciate the west because you actually know what it's like to not be in the west mm -hmm. and i feel like people who are born in western civilization just take it for granted where it's like you know of course the world needs to keep moving forward in every sense of the way yeah but we take for granted some of like you know someone dying like you can't get their body back Ima imagine that happened in america or somewhere here it'd be like it's insanity insane. it's insanity and there's like you know and a lot of people i feel like uh also don't know the history and you know I, I don't know the history of plenty of countries in the world but <laughs> before 1979 Iran was a monarchy and it was secular though so like religion did not rule women could dress how they wanted rights they had rights they were involved in in government positions things were different now I'm not saying it was perfect because obviously people <laughs> had perfect. issues Nothing's with, perfect, yeah, yeah with but you know when you look back you're like well obviously that is infinitely better than what came after it and so um yeah, and I think that sometimes stops people from speaking out, I've heard, because they think, well, we don't want to disrespect your culture. I'm like, no, that is not our, this regime is not Iranian culture. Please speak out against but then them every chance. It goes chance. back to what you were saying before. It's like the, this is where the people are not the government, the people are not the people who are ruling the country, the people are the people, and, and some of them have lived, you know, through that, that changeover in 1979. Yes. Well, yeah. this is a good segue into my question about <laughs> um, the difference between the Ayatollah, the Shah, and the president. Did I get those right? Yes. Okay. So but there's three, right? There's three. You're talking about Khomeini, the guy who ushered in the Islamic Republic. Just in Republic, general. Maybe? Like, obviously, in 79, there was... Yes, he came from... He Shah. was in exile in, in France, and then they brought him over. Uh, the Shah was the king. The last dynasty were the Pahlavis. And the we have a supreme leader. I don't say, I don't say we. <laughs> the Islamic Republic has a supreme leader. His name's Ali Khamenei. He's like this decrepit old man, and um, he oversees everything. And so he's the Ayatollah. Uh, well, what is he? He's they just it's they this call is, him okay, supreme leader. Yeah, he's okay. the supreme leader. Yeah, okay. um, and then supreme leader. Isn't that uh, what they call Kim Jong Un? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Anyway, sorry. The what? The <laughs> Kim supreme leader. Kim Jong Un. Oh, yeah, supreme yeah. leader. Sorry. Great. So they're in good company. <laughs> um, and then there's a president who's elected, and I lose, use that term very loosely because it's, it's never, it's all, they're always sham elections. The Supreme Leader and this Council of Guardians, which are these like religious clerics, they get to pick who gets to go on the ballot. And um, it's, it's, it's all, you know, the same type of people. It, it's like Russia. It's any other, you know, authoritarian, dictatorial place you want to say it's like that. Yeah. yeah. So. Wild. It's fascinating. Yeah. Absolutely fascinating. Wild. That's why we got to get rid of them. Damn straight, man. Damn straight. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's not used you, to are you going to keep going? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is all you, babe. Hey, this is a growing process for me. Are you proud of me? <laughs> I love that um, I'm a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he's talking. <laughs> um, so especially what's going on with the Middle East in general, mm -hmm. we go deeper into like women's rights and like, why aren't women speaking up on, you know, certain aspects of what's going on and kind of siloing it to what only they want to talk about. When it comes to like overall women's rights in the Middle East, mm -hmm. in Iran, can you give us a little bit of a glimpse of like, you know, obviously we talked about wearing certain clothing and all right. that stuff, but what can you do? Like, can you, can you exist or is it just like you're born to reproduce and you're going to find someone that's going to have a family with and that's it? Like, what, what are women's rights like? Yeah, um, abysmal, <laughs> but it's like, it, and you know, the matter of, the mandatory headscarf and the cover, that obviously is something that everybody's fighting against. But that's not, that's like the tip of the iceberg because it's more about, you know, people have to live these double lives almost because you have to do so many things in secret or underground or if you know someone to pay off or, um, you know, you can't be who you are. Sorry, you can't be all, you can't always be who you are in public 
at the same way you are in private. Mm -hmm. You know, women, for example, women can't sing solo in public. You can't have concerts with women as the lead singer. Women cannot ride bicycles. Now, there's not a technical law in the books, but women have been detained and imprisoned for riding bicycles because they deem it immodest or immoral for to you be like on a thing with your legs apart, which is so dumb. Idiotic. It's, and then you have like women can't, uh, they're not able to study everything they want to study. You have to get, um, you know, approval for things to study. Their testimony is not worth, um, equal, is not equal to a man in court. Um, women can't serve as judges. They have allowed a few to sit on these family courts, but even then their ruling does not stand. A man has to actually be the one I to I saw in Saudi Arabia that if you get raped or assaulted, you can't go to the police. You have to get a man to go to the police for you. Oh, I'm not familiar with that law in Something Saudi Arabia. Something yes. It's like you can't go tell yeah. your crime. Some A man has to tell your crime on behalf of you. Because we can't do anything on our own is how they feel. Um, but, you know, it's all a way to control women. So, you know, from, like I said, this, I, the last time I was in Iran, one of the last times I was in Iran, even me laughing loudly at a restaurant, I remember one of my aunts was like, hey, we got to keep it down a little bit. Just everything about you is just like, ah, uh, it's like they have their hands around your throat at all times. And um, what else? Like women, you know. Uh, Can they date? Like, like. You, when you're in high school, can you have a boyfriend? Of course you date, but it's not like it's you do it publicly. It's not like you are out there like we do here in America on dates, holding hands at rest. Now, people, again, do it in mm -hmm. places that they can or um, in, in, you know, in secret ways. But it's it's and these are one of the acts of civil disobedience that we've been seeing over the last few years with people in Iran posting pictures, too, which is holding hands with their significant others in, you know, in front of iconic structures to show that they're doing this in Iran or, um, you know, LGBTQ couples doing the same types of things uh, because, you know, they obviously don't have rights under the Islamic Republic either and are severely repressed. So people still date. They do. They, they, they use Tinder and Bumble through VPNs. Yeah, I think we're um, going to get into that. I was going to say, oh, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. so interested we'll to, to hear yeah. about that. So, but like, yeah, so people still date. People still have sex. People do all the things. They just have to do it a little bit more uh, covertly mm. okay. for the most part. Like you said, living a double life. It is almost for like a living a double life. And I don't mean that either. It's like, it's like, they're being forced to do that. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's not, it's not know, willful double life. Right. It's just more so like I don't, I don't want to threaten, threaten myself, my family, safety yeah. for just living and being a human. Yeah. But these like great acts of, of heroism almost, and it's something is what seems so simple and innocuous as holding hands, but to be able to do that, to put it out, and as to your point of you know these young women who are going up and and really screaming from the rooftops of their rights, like yeah. it's so powerful. Yeah, yeah. Then you touched on universities before as well. So we, we looked up, like, uh, apparently female enrollment in universities is higher than male, mm -hmm. but then we dug deeper into it, and it was like, well, they couldn't actually choose the major that they wanted and, like, go into being a doctor or an engineer. It was kind of more, if you're going to be in university, you're, you're only going to study this. Right, that's, yeah, so one of the things is they can't, you, you can't study everything you would want to study. So that's another way to control and repress. Yeah. Fascinating, fascinating. Yeah. This is absolutely um, wild. That's rapid fire. So you're um, done. I think I'm done. <laughs> Good oh, job, wow. babe. I'm so proud of you. Wow. <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hannah's show. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> With the right encouragement, <laughs> they can the do right it. support system. Mm -hmm. They can do anything. Now the fun Except starts. for the Uber driver who can't. You could not drive and talk at the same time. I was like, man, I do this on the highway. Come on. <laughs> well, we want to get into like, obviously we're a dating app and a, a dating podcast. And so we yeah. want to get into the dating. And I want to talk a little bit about like, the cultural differences, but then I want to get into you personally as okay. well with dating. Yeah. So you you kind of just touch on what um what goes on within Iran in terms of like dating and having to be a bit more of like a secret or secrecy surrounding it. But let's touch on these dating apps because when we were talking back and forth um uh, through email, you said this, and I was like, what on earth? And then I I researched the government subsidized. Yeah. Dating app, which mm -hmm. was just absolutely wild. So can you tell us a little bit about that? I know. A little bit about it and uh i just know that you have to you have to sign up you have to put in some personal information which you do on dating apps but that it is monitored by the government yeah. and then apparently the last thing i read about it was you have to give an update at a certain point in time to be like well this is what happened with x or this is what happened with y and first of all who's going to trust that app nobody in their right mind would ever willingly give the islamic republic any of their personal information especially when it comes to dating or sex um so i found that fascinating i don't know anybody who uses that app but i did talk to people i know in iran and people who i know 
regularly uh, talk to their family members. And I was like, can you make sure that this information I have is accurate about Bumble and Tinder? And they're like, yeah, yeah, people use it. They just use VPNs to, um, to bypass to actually be able to get on it. So you can. I don't know how often people use That's it, but I know say. that it is used and people have done it. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. And it shouldn't even be wild that they do it no it shouldn't be wild at all but just like understanding the structure of the country and the way that everything is done is the fact that people are like no we're still gonna like date we're gonna find a way to get around this and have some sense of modern within what's happening also like i've i always from the times i visited too like and i you know i've I've watched so many videos out of iran of just like regular people like there's skate culture there's hip-hop there's b b uh sorry b-boy dance there's everything so when you're in tehran yeah is it it like being in downtown la like like the 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 vibe as far as like like, it's busy it's a city it's you know iran has you know four seasons iran also has amazing skiing they have beautiful you know like by the sea and beaches and but obviously you cannot go in like bathing suits and stuff um and you know the city is looks like a city there's also villages there's also lush areas so it has everything mm-hmm. it's a gorgeous you know place to be full of history um and yeah i mean i i would have as much fun as i could while i was there you know within the parameters and we did things that were underground as well i got stopped by the morality police a couple times so like i have experienced it firsthand to know that these things how scary they are and and when you're actually in it in real life and um just to know that like i say all that to say i find the youth and the people of iran are like way cooler they know they re- they know everything we know. They I feel like they a lot of times if you watch they've done like these like uh, segments on the street with people. They know a lot more about our politics than I feel like a lot of Americans even know about. Our, you know what I mean? Like they're up on all the trends and everything. It's so they try to fight back in every way that they can. And I think, you know, staying up to date is one of those ways. Yeah, it's one of the things that they can kind of yeah. weaponize. Now, are, are, do, do those kids can they still come to America freely? And then if they do, do they stay? Or? It's very hard to get visas for Iranians. Um, and I believe policies enacted by Trump also made that worse yeah. um, because of the relations with the regime. So Iranians are under, Iranian men are under way more scrutiny um, than the women, I would say. Um, people do still come, but it's not like people can. And also it's like, I mean, if you're a 15-year-old kid and you don't know anyone here, what are you going to leave the country so for? You know, it's like you have to either know somebody or have a plan or um, something along and those And you lines. could still go back freely? Like, I cannot. No. You I can't. Well, the joke your is... activism? Like, you, yeah, the <laughs> joke is I, I can go back, but I might not be able to come back to America. Like, I can go to Iran. I might not be able to come back. Because, well, also when you're an, an actress, I've done things that... Um, one of the first TV shows that I did, I played an Iranian-American journalist that went to Iran and got kidnapped um, and held for ransom, which what, which is what the regime actually does. It's a very real storyline, and it has happened to other journalists. And, um, yeah, so because of that, my family was like, you probably shouldn't come because you painted the regime in a bad light. And then I wrote this script based on the time I was there during, because I actually was there during the 2009 elections. Um, I just happened to land two days before the elections. It was a coincidence that the trip, trip was planned that way. So I also saw a lot of things, heard a lot of things, wrote about it. And that script I had sent to Sundance's Screenwriter Lab, and it went through the first round. So I was like, okay, so it's kind of like out there. Mm. So that's another reason I wouldn't go. And then once I started speaking out more against the regime, it was like, well, definitely I can't go. It was like three tracks, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, there's I'm no way. definitely out. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But there's no. a huge Persian community in LA specifically, right? Like, there's I a huge, like- yeah, we have um, the largest concentration of Iranians outside of Iran. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where I grew up in the D.C. metro area, there's also a large concentration of us over there, too. Because a lot of those, a lot of the immigrants that came to the D.C. area came to go to all the schools there, and they stayed. And so, yeah. And I I, I I mean, up until like five years ago, I didn't realize that there's a big Jewish Persian community. In like, L.A.? Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. I yes. thought, you know, you, you, when you don't know things, you're like, oh, yeah. Middle East, it's mostly Islamic. Oh, right. No, 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 no. We have, we have Jewish Iranians as well. Yeah, yeah there's... Um, it, oops, I keep hitting your microphone. Uh, yeah, there. I think LA probably has the largest concentration of Jewish, Jewish Iranians as well. Wow. I might be mistaken, but I think that's true. Uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, New York. New York has um, a population of Jewish Iranians as well. I want to talk about <clears throat> very briefly for a second, like arranged marriage. Is that something um, that still kind of goes on? I don't hear about that. No, you no. don't hear about it. And I also know that like the. I don't know that where the trend, like the last time I heard this trend a few months ago from someone who has gone back and forth was people are going back into the trend of marrying earlier 
And I think sometimes it's because they want to get out of their parents' homes or get like some sort of freedom or it's just become like start trendy again to like get married early. But then there's a whole generation of people that are just like, meh, you know, or they've been divorced and they don't remarry. Um, but I don't hear about arranged marriages no. in Iran like that. How, it's not like prevalent. How heavily is like a familial influence on like people's dating lives? Like is it the family's there, approval? I, I don't, I, yeah, it would be, I mean, people well, are even here as well. With, you here know. it's different. Yeah. Here I also feel like when you grow up here, you have to, and I was the first born. So I feel like I had to really break my parents <laughs> in when it came to guys. Um, Cause I've, you do, you know, like I dated, um, I have dated um, outside of my culture. So I've dated people that are not Iranian as well. And they're, my parents are just like, we just want you to be happy and we want the guy to be like nice Always and or, good to or you. Did it change over time? It changed over time, but it wasn't, they never were like, don't do it. They were always just like, oh, it's it's easier. And there are some things that, you know, of course it'd be nice to be with somebody from your culture of, mm. because they under there's like a shorthand you have. Yeah. Um, but no, they're not like, my parents have never... I don't know. It's probably been like 15 years since or 10 years since the last time like they were trying to like influence. <laughs> my dad never does. It's mostly my mom. Oh, really? <laughs> but, yeah. Hannah deals with that. Yeah, it's a mom thing. Because she's not Italian. So, mm. you know. Wait, from your Moms parents? Sons, yeah, yeah. So, so they did not. No, you, not they didn't like they her. Loved but, me. you know. Oh, yeah, of course. Same thing as like, I feel like it's like a Mediterranean, Middle Eastern yeah. thing. It's like the family. The family. So, yeah. My, my, you know, I'm Italian, so they were like, a, you know, stick with the Italian people. Right, right, right. And I was like, that's stupid. Yeah. So I met her, and not that they didn't like her, but you know, she was a vegan. I was she just wouldn't have like very, meatballs. very foreign to and them. They were just yeah. like, in a lot of, and I sound like this. And his dad, he literally, uh, the first like six months I knew his dad, he's like, what'd she say? Oh. <laughs> They're like, we need a translator. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so I was just very foreign to them, and I understood that. But they were very foreign to me as yeah. well. Like, it was a really bizarre situation to walk into. But yeah, love them to death. Love you guys. Yeah. Um, There's beauty that comes from you know, having a relationship with someone outside of your culture and all the things you're exposed to and learn. One thing, and I always I always think about how our children will be and how beautiful that will be, the fact that they're not only from different countries but different cultures yeah. and they get that mix and they're just going to grow up with this really very unique perspective on life. It's going to be beautiful. Plus, it's going to be very, very well fed. And also hot. I hope so. <laughs> I, I hope so. Um, I will, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but, like, do you think that um, is having someone from the same, like, cultural background important to you in terms of, like long-term dating and marriage or, or are you completely open to anything? I'm open to anything. Mm -hmm. I always have that little thing in the back of my head that I was like, mm, it would be really nice if they're Iranian. But uh, yeah, there's issues there too. What's ideal for you? Perfect world. Um, characteristics? Yeah, just like dream guy. Perfect world. Oh, dream, any, okay. any ethnicity, any height. Okay, dream guy. I'm just going to be a uh, six or taller because I'm 5'9", so it'd be okay. nice to be able to wear heels. Yeah, cheers to the tall girls. Thank and you. I know some people are like, that's not that tall, but it's tall. It's, it's just not tall. super tall. It's tall. Right? <laughs> that was me cheersing to that. And um, yeah, so physically, sure, tall, fit, because, you know, I like to, you know, just be healthy and I'm active. So someone who also likes those things, we can do them together maybe. Um, and then I love a good facial hair. Love that scruff. Um, it doesn't give you pash rash? I don't think so. Uh, you just have to keep it conditioned. Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep it conditioned. Conditioner. You got to condition and then it's, it should be fine. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> but no, but someone who's also like has a good sense of humor, is stable in their life and career mentally and emotionally and, you know, physically and spiritually. Someone who is supportive of me and what I want to do in my career because I've dated a lot of guys that just were not there um, with the support. And someone who... Um, you know, if they're not Iranian, is would love to be open to my culture and to participate in all those things because that's important to me. That's not something that's going to lessen over time. Mm -hmm. um, that treats me right. That is a good communicator. Um, oh, it's so key. It's really the most it's crucial essential. thing. It it's is essential. essential. And 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 it, we don't have to be the same type of communicator, but to understand that maybe I'm like this and you're like that, where can we meet in the middle when we don't agree on something? Well, wanting to communi communicate about the fact that you have different communication styles. Yeah. Literally. Just anything. Yeah. Just being so open to it. Those are the things off the top of my head. A good but, dancer would be nice. Good dancer? Yeah. A smart. Oh my gosh, smart. Because I hate when you have to explain things to people or like gets my inside jokes, wittiness, like someone mm. who's also quick on their feet. You don't have to be like, woo, like I am all the time, but like just able <laughs> to keep the pace with me. Not you. Intellectual in conversations. Yeah. Just like know about what's going on in the world. You don't have to know everything, but like I want to be able to talk to you and not have to be like, okay, let me explain this thing. Let me explain that thing. Yeah. Somebody who can keep up with you. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Keep up with me. Um, all right, before I get to dating in general, I want to ask you this question because we throw a lot of singles events here 
okay. in LA and New York and Miami, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I always want to know, like, what do you think, how would you structure the perfect kind of event for an Iranian American culture or the Persian culture? Oh, that's so interesting. Thank you. That's a great question. Thank you. Wow. Okay. So how would I do an event for the Iranian American community yeah. to kind of date, like a, a dating mixer. event, a single event? Okay, you gotta have good music. Okay. What's good music? So I would like a blend of hip hop, some of the older poppy dance stuff, like I'm talking like Whitney Houston-ish, yep. and right. like, you know, that that vibe. Um, and with a mix of Persian music, but like the, you know, some of the old school stuff, but some of the newer school stuff that has like really good Western-y beats mixed with Persian What's your beats. favorite Persian song? Oh, yeah, I don't have favorites. I know so many. What's a good one that we could... Uh, I'll give you an old school one. One of my favorite old school songs is a song called Parande, which means bird, and it's by this Armenian Iranian artist named Martik, and it's just like it just really gets you going. <laughs> um, and then there's this group, and I'm only I'm saying them now because I listen to them heavily right now because they've released some new music. They're called TM Backs, and they have this like blend of Persian and pop and like a hip hoppy type thing, and it's just like really like gets me going. So that's that. You gotta have a really cool, like maybe a couple cool specialty cocktails that are infused mm. with like saffron or pomegranate, mm. something that's like you know native to us. Um, saffron, yeah, world's world's largest saffron producer in the world. And it's one of I think it's the that's most expensive, expensive thing other than gold. Say, yeah, it is. yeah, um, and. Tell everyone, they'll all dress up. Everyone will dress up. And they, that's just part of our culture. Um, they'll do that anyway. Um, I just think if the vibe is good and having food, we have to eat. Um, like it has to, you can't have these little like finger foods. There's got to be like food at this event, I feel like. And I just think music, good cocktails. <laughs> Good food. Good food. Lots of good food. Lots of good food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. It makes me really happy. We're going to have to throw one of those. <laughs> yeah. Where's the best hummus? Tell them we wear all black. Los Angeles. I don't know. I'm not a hummus isn't native no? to us, so oh, like okay. I don't. That's yeah. more Mediterranean. It, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, people eat hummus. Iranians yeah. eat hummus, but it's not like native to our culture. And I don't have a favorite place. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, God, I love hummus so much. I, just, I was just thinking about hummus. <laughs> Great as you were to saying dip that. things in. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, all right. So I want to get to like dating in general. And we ask. Okay. We typically ask questions kind of like like pre date during the date and post date, which okay. I think is really interesting. So I want to okay. ask you a question. So do you research your date before you meet them? Define research. Do you well? <laughs> do you Google, and if so, how far do you Google? Okay, sometimes or I will. Social media. Yeah, sometimes I will do a quick skim, and a quick Google. A because I feel like, especially when you're a little bit more in the public eye, you have to be a little bit careful with who you bring into your orbit. Of course, seriously, especially no. as a woman. Um, for safety reasons. So I'll go make sure, like, okay, this person said they're a surgeon at Cedar Sinai. Let me go make sure they're a surgeon at Cedar Sinai. Okay, that checks out. Um, unless it's been set up through a mutual friend, then I'm like, all right, I believe it. Um, I'll just do a quick skim because I want to see if there's anything in there that's like super douchey or, you know. Well, like a median discrepancy where you're just like, okay, that doesn't match up. Maybe this is not Yeah, the yeah. Way. So I do a skim. And I actually don't like to look too much because I want to get to know the person on the date. And I've even, there's been times where I've been set up with someone and I've even said on the phone, like, they're like, what's your Instagram? I'd be like, I'd rather you not look, actually. Because I also think that because of, you know, I don't put my whole life on my social media. You're only going to see snippets. If you go look at my social media, you might get a picture of me that you think, like, this is all Nazanin is. And instead of giving me a chance to, you know, show you all of who I am, you're going to go, you're going to come in with a preconceived notion already. We, we preach that all the time. Yeah, tell like, people, don't go look. Like, courtesy skim just for safety. Exactly. It's perfectly acceptable. But mm -hmm. the more and more you dig, the more and more you create this image of that person in your mind. And the, the more likely you're not to go on that first date because you're like, oh, or you're about to hype them up. And then that person, you, that person could disappoint you without even meaning to disappoint you because you've just hyped them up so much in your head. Absolutely. Wow. Let them disappoint you in person. Exactly, <laughs> darling. Preach. Do you ever think that if people know who you are ahead of the date and look at your Instagram, they'll sometimes want to just go on a date with you for clout? Well, I will say maybe. A couple of times this has happened to me where, and who knows what the reason was, but the guy said, can I have your Instagram? And I was like, sure. So I did. And then, I, and then the date didn't happen. And then I was like, what the fuck was on there that they didn't like? But then I'm like, you know what? Fuck you then. If that turned, you. you know, like my issue, God, bye. I don't want to go out there anyway. <laughs> um, but that's happened before, actually, where, yeah. Yeah, I feel, I feel like yeah, in your yeah. case, it's like both ends of the spectrum. On yeah. one end, it's like you're somewhat, you know, famous and people want clout. To some people. On the other end, yeah. you're an activist and right. it could turn people off. Oh, my God. Like, I'm sometimes scared of honeypots. 
it's a thing that they use, like the CIA uses, where they'll send like a pretty girl or an attractive guy to infiltrate you and then get information. <gasps> honey pot. Wouldn't we just watch a movie That's probably just honey, me being honey conspiratorial. Pot. Think about that. that would have been so A honey pot. Yeah. I, would, I can't honey remember. Dip, honey pot. Honey pot. Honey, honey dip. Oh, honey dip. Uh, it's probably been on a TV show recently, yeah, too. Yeah, it was. Oh, man. I think it was that new rom com we just watched. And they kept getting honey honey dipped. Honey pot. Honey pot. Honey pot. Honey dipped. That sounds fun. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna be on Twitter. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Honey dipped. That's hilarious. That sounds very uncomfortable. Yeah. No, I, I <clears throat> no, but yeah. I didn't even think about that as as I mean, but clearly I'm not that important that anybody no, would do that. But, but it's conspiratorial. I, I think that I'm like I've watched two. I've been you know I studied government international politics in college. I've 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 always been fascinated by this world. So I'm always involved. I'm like learning. I'm involved. I'm act, do activist work, whatever. And then I always think I'm like somebody could do that to me. Listen, I feel like it's better to be more conspiratorial than Two. it is not, Knife. and then just to be walking around. It's yeah. like, like everything's gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. It was the interview. Oh, yeah. Is know. that the Seth Rogen one? Yeah. yeah. He uh-huh. says honey something, but it's the same reference. It's honey potted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Kim Jong-un <clears throat> keeps honey potting him. He's like, he honey, he honey. Well, they say that. Isn't that what happened to um, the congressman? Was it Swalwell or somebody from California? I'm trying to remember. But they thought, well, it was de- it was revealed in like documents that were declassified, I think, that he got honey potted or someone was trying to honey pot him. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's a thing. <laughs> so I'm just going to walk home and say honey potted so many times tonight. <laughs> All right. So what makes you feel most confident before a first date? Most confident? Mm. Um, Could be like I, cologne, a good workout. I, I just like... Cologne. Cologne. Okay. Yes, Perfume. I love a good cologne. I spray some cologne. And I'm ready to the go. guy will be like, "This is what he's gonna smell this like." This is your second date of the day. Your yeah. third date of the day. Um, <laughs> no, I usually do actually get. Uh, I usually do go for a hike, but I do that regularly. But I, I, I do like to do something physical because it does. I just feel better. Mm. Um, and I, you know, usually shower um, and uh, put on really good music while I'm getting ready because that hypes me up when I'm getting ready. Yeah. Yeah, like good, good hip hop. Some Beyonce in there, <laughs> some Persian music, of course, because I do my little Persian dance, and and then I'm ready. Something yeah. where you sit in the mirror and you pretend you're in a music video. I, I do that all the time. I absolutely still do that to this Every day. Every day. I did that before I came here. So <laughs> I did. We're going to be friends. <laughs> yeah. um, so do you have anybody that you like call to hype you up before a first date, or do you do all of the self hyping? I do most of the self hyping. Mm-hmm. I think that I, I, you know what it is. I talk sometimes to my sister or one of my best friends because we're talking about like, oh my god, the prospect, and you know, if it's someone that I might have had my eye on, it's like, oh my god, he asked me out. We're gonna go. How's it gonna be? And then they're like, yeah, you're just gonna have fun. Go be yourself. So it's kind of like that, mm. you know? Yeah, reconfirming it. Yeah. I said, what do you think the biggest mistake? Oh, actually, no. <laughs> Let me go back. Mm-hmm. How many minutes into a date do you know that you're interested in somebody? Oh, I feel like. There's been times where in the first five to ten minutes, I'm like, mm, this isn't going to work out. But they're nice. So we're going to hear it. We're going to have a good conversation here. But I don't think I'm going to see them again in that light. I, yeah. I'm interested because I feel like a lot of women that I've asked, because we do like on the street with some of these questions as well, and a lot of the women were like five minutes, ten minutes, right? So it's always kind of around that marker. Yeah. I'm curious as to a man, is it the same for men? Uh, well, we know the physical attraction. I was going to say, they're looking for different things. So the physical attraction, we probably know within a minute or two, obviously when we see you and then get a vibe. Uh, but when it comes to like actually clicking and liking somebody, I feel like five to 10 minutes, you have to get past the nervous phase. When you meet somebody new, you're going to be nervous. You're not going to be your best self. So I always like to, prior to you, give people credit in being like, okay, the first 10 minutes, maybe I'm a little nervous. Maybe you're a little nervous. Let's get through that. It's probably going to be a little messy. Yeah. And then from like 10 minutes to whatever, I'll be like, okay, I could see us clicking or we really don't have much in common. This is probably not going anywhere. So People it's like. People can surprise you. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. a People couple of phases. You. Like, yeah. Obviously, if you're not attracted to that person in the first minute, you'll, like you said, be friendly and nice and enjoy the time. Yeah. If you're attracted to each other, then you'll kind of like wait it out to see. And I think for women, for me at least, the attraction part is different because even if someone isn't like physically super my type, I've dated so many people that aren't the type I described earlier. And it's because they were charming, they were smart, they were funny, they were witty. And that for a woman makes you like makes the man more appealing to oh, me. Like, you could be super hot, but if I'm talking to a bag of rocks, like I'm not going to want to go out with you again, no matter how hot you well, are. Well, yeah, then the attraction level just I think wanes. same for yeah, men exactly. as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, same thing. If there was a very aesthetically beautiful woman in front of me, yeah. like it's great. But then right. if there was nothing there, right. I'd be like, I'm th- I'm 30 something years old. I don't really 
care to just walk around with you. Like I want to have deep intellectual conversations. Yeah, I want to build something. Which is more of a turn on as I got older in life. It was more the mind than the body. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, we're still men at the end of the day. So when you see somebody, you're just like, I'm attracted to her. I'm not attracted to her. And then it takes a little bit of time to then it yeah. figure it out. You know, yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. Um, what do you think the biggest mistake that people make is after a first date? I don't know if that was grammatically correct, but... Biggest mistake people make? Yeah. Um, love bombing? Mm. Because that's happened to me. I'm very susceptible to it, unfortunately. And I think I'm getting better at seeing the red flags and like pushing it away. Um, but I've had slip ups. So <laughs> <laughs> can you can you elaborate more on the like so I before I met Hannah, I was in LA for like three or four months and I dated and it was the weirdest place to date I've ever experienced in my life. LA is so normal for dating. <laughs> <laughs> and I can only imagine place. because you know, I always tried to be as respectful as possible, but Love bombing here is just like its own beast because everyone's trying to like impress you and overdo it and overcompensate. Mm-hmm. What's can you have? Do you have an example or what's it been your experience overall? To me, what's happened to me personally with various people, love bombing, their love bombing is um, immediate terms of endearment, mm-hmm. which is very cute. And I mm. love little pet names and, and we have so many of them in Persian as well. Um, but I think I'm, le- I've learned too that like, okay, if it comes like really soon, is that person really feeling that way about me or they're in that lust period because they don't actually know me as a person yet. So they can't think infatuation. I'm their breath their every breath after two weeks. They can't <laughs> because I mean, they can, they can, but do they really mean it? Mm. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like overly ex- um, too much in contact. Um, too like much in contact. Too, of being in contact too much. Yeah, like as, as in, listen, the first like the first few weeks is crucial too because you can overstep, you can turn people off, and I want. I think you should always be yourself. If I feel something, if I want you to, I'm gonna tell you. I'm I'm open with my feelings in my heart, but I also know that you have to hold back at some point in the beginning because uh, I feel like. If you're being love bombed, they're going to like that you're reciprocating. But if it's someone who comes from a little bit more of a healthier emotionally and romantic, emotional and romantic background, they're going to find it weird if you're love bombing back Mm. or two. So it's like, I don't know if that makes sense. No, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, too much, too much affection and attention and immediate wanting to label it. And, oh, where were you? What were you doing? That kind of stuff, mm. which is, it, it depends on how you do it. It could be cute. Hey, if it's like every couple of days, you're like, oh, what have you been up to? That's different than like, I haven't heard from you in a couple hours. Or what are you up to? Mm. And what, who are you? Where are you going? And and implying that they can I come too? like, I don't know. It's like, well, it sets an expectation, too, it because if, that, if it starts that way, it's not going to get better, in my it does opinion. not. Get better. Um, but I think it's outside of romantic relationships it's everything if you're applying for a job mm-hmm. you have an interview it goes great yeah and then the next day you're like hey did i get the job and the person's just like what, what? and then analogy. the next day you're like hey did i get the job and the guy's like well Come what do you think of me as a candidate yeah, yeah like yeah. well now you don't get the job because <laughs> oh, i don't want to deal with this every day this couple people have asked me like what do you think of me and i'm like i literally just met you i <laughs> i think you're you nice, nice now <laughs> yeah. yeah we're having fun and and i remember that was a red flag that went off for me with someone like i don't know it was a year or two ago um, and we had so much fun on the first couple dates. And then on the third date, he was like, so like, what do you think of me then? I was like, well, I'm here. So like, I obviously like you, but you know, and, uh, oh, and I think trying to assert some sort of, I don't know if control is the right word, but really soon, like this person I'm talking about a couple years ago, he knows I'm an actor and he knew that about me before we went out on this date. And I had mentioned that I would, I was I had booked this play and I was like oh, I'm probably going to be gone for a few months doing this doing this show, and he was like Oh you're going to be gone oh, that's going to be really difficult and hard I don't know how. I was like first of all you're assuming we're going to stay together you're assu- and then like why does that's my job why if would I tell you not to go to your work if you had to go somewhere and do something so stuff like that is that's red flaggy and I feel like don't do stuff like that 100 percent but I also feel like people are so much more willing to to do those types of things with like acting or modeling. They're like, well, it's not really. It's, they kind of view it as like not a real job, and they're like, what do you mean you have to go away for a couple of months? Yeah. What do you mean you have to go and do? Well, why can't you do everything here? In LA? Like, I had, I had ex boyfriends because I was a model for a very long time, and I'd go on set and be like, I have to model with this fella. Like, it's just part of my job. I'm getting paid to go on set <clears throat> to stand next to this fella, yeah. model some clothes, and they'd be like, well, why? 
Do you have to? Get, I'm like, well, how? And I'd say, I'm like, so, like, when you go to work and you get told what to do, do you do what your boss tells yeah. you to do? I cannot have meetings with women. <laughs> like, I'm like, so sorry, my yeah. girlfriend won't allow it. Can like, you imagine? What the fuck? It's weird. <laughs> um, all right, last one on dating, and then we're getting into how well you, you know yourself. Oh, Actually, geez. two more. Okay. Okay, so if Joe and I mm-hmm. were to set you up on a first date, mm-hmm. what would be the perfect drink, the perfect time, and the perfect place? Ooh. Why? Do you know someone? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um... Okay, perfect. Not in LA. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys going to fly me somewhere? That's so sweet. Um, perfect drink. Okay, if we're going to say alcoholic. Yep, sure. Um, some sort of spicy mezcal mm. thing. Or a friend of mine turned me on to mezcal Negronis recently. So one of those. One of those drinks. It's like the third time this week that I've heard Vince Steyer started. Really? Brought me onto that. Yeah. Mezcal Negroni? Yeah, yeah. I started it's like a year ago. Amazing. Yeah. Easy, smooth, clean. Um... What you said, perfect place? Perfect place, perfect time. Yeah, I think still evening for me is cool. I like a really nice rooftop mm. situation where you have this gorgeous panoramic view of the city. You can, you have this, I, I just feel like I also, I love natural light and then I also love being in open spaces. It makes me feel like oh, I can breathe, I can mm. relax, I'm alive. Um, <laughs> so I I would love that. I think at you know, and the sun is setting, and then it goes into the evening. How romantic. I love it. Oh I think God. it'd be nice. Yeah, and then if it's a daytime thing, something active would be cool. Yeah? Like a hike. Or, like, get, let's get coffee and go... Not co- coffee and hike, because you can get dehydrated. But, like, <laughs> let's get a coffee after the hike. Um, so smart. Yeah, yeah. Something physical would also be fun for mm. me. Yeah. I love How that. How do you feel about if a guy asks you out for a drink on a first date and not dinner? Yeah, I don't like that too much, but I feel like it's become such a thing now in our culture that like if I said no to that all the time, then I might not go out with. But then is if, if I feel like okay, this guy seems like it could be something or it's worth it as far as I see like oh, there's maybe a connection. Sure, because I know that for guys too, I, I feel like they think, well, I can't take everyone out to dinner. I don't know this <laughs> exactly. girl either. We know like we're like well, like, well, we're cool. We're great. You should take us out to dinner. But not everybody wants to do that, and that's fine. They can do a drink. Yeah, yeah from the yeah. guy's perspective, it's like you said. Yeah, they want to suss you out too, and it's like sure. Yeah, if you do if it, we always say if a guy goes on two dates a week yeah. to a nice restaurant. I know he's got to make a lot. It gets of money. expensive. Well, we yeah. asked a whole bunch of fellas on the street the other day, like how much would you? What's the ideal amount that you'd you'd spend on a first date? They were like three hundred. Really? I was like, three hundred. Three hundred dollars. That's the a lot. Me- that, that's what I said. I was like, the medium range was like two fifty to three fifty. I was like, oh. I'm, then I'm a cheap date because first of all, I have one drink and <laughs> I would eat whatever I want. But oh, there was this guy. I was on a first date with him, and he, we went to this sushi restaurant, and um, we were going to. I hope he doesn't watch this. We were going to not scary <laughs> far because he's gonna know who it is. Who it is? He's gonna know who it is. I'm even gonna say he was a surgeon. I'm gonna set it up like that because it's not like what. Anyway, so we're going to not scary <laughs> farm after that, and then the before we went to the sushi restaurant, and he was like, the server came around, was like, do you want to do omkase, which is where they, you know, you pay a set amount, and they, the chef just like brings out the fresh stuff of the day and the way they want to do it, and then she was like, it's this much or whatever. And then he goes, oh, I really want to do omkase. I was like, and he goes, do you want to do it? I go, I don't really need it. I just want a couple rolls because we're about to go to the theme park or whatever. So like, don't, it's fine. It's like too much. And then he goes, yeah, I don't want to spend that much on a first date anyway. And I was like, and he goes, oh my God, I cannot, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that out loud. And I said, and I laughed because I was like, at least you're being honest. He set himself up for his he own did. red flag. And then when the check came. <laughs> it's an inside thought. Yeah, it is inside thought. And he caught himself too, which was good, but I thought it was hilarious. And then the check came and I was like, do you need me to help you with that? <laughs> <laughs> really? And he was like, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You injected yeah. some levity into it, I which did. is all yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to. It was yeah. funny. Um, all right. So we always like to ask people, would you date yourself? So would you? I think I would. I would. I know, I know, I know who I am and I know that I have a lot to offer. So I would date me. I think I, I might get annoyed by myself sometimes, <laughs> but I would date me. All right. Well, in that vein, we're going to play How Well Do You Know Yourself? So oh, I I'm so scared for this. have okay. done a deep dive on everything there is across the internet and chosen six to seven specific cases. All okay. right. You ready? Exactly. No one's ever got it. Wait, what no are you doing? Score. What's the premise? How do I do this? You're so gonna... I'm going to say something and I'm going to be like, finish either finish the sentence or do you know what this is? Or do you remember what you did in this specific thing? And okay. Then you see if because you it's something I've done or said? It's something you've done oh or said. Oh my God. Said. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first one actually isn't something you've done or said, but it is completely related to you. Do you know what your name means? 
Yes. What does it mean? Beautiful sweetheart. It does. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that so sweet? When I read that, I was like, oh my God. And I will attest to the fact that you are a beautiful sweetheart. Oh my God, you're so sweet. So you've Thank lived you. up to it. All Thank right. You. <clears throat> you played Dr. Joyce Giles, Giles? Yeah. in an episode of Criminal Minds in 2014. What did the unsub pierce the abdomen and slash the victim's throat with? Oh, shards of glass. Yes, yes. yes. I got it. I knew it. Wow. <laughs> two for two. <laughs> okay, in October 2021, you posted a video on Insta that said that you were going as every Iranian w- mother's nightmare for Halloween. What was it? Unmarried. <laughs> <laughs> Unmarried daughter. Unmarried daughter, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what uh, Tehran is the plastic surgery capital for? Noses. She's on wow. fire, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. All right. Uh, you posted a video on YouTube in 2018 titled... Uh, Sense and Insensitive. Da- no, oh. that's a different one. Um, dating Persian, mm. where you gave tips to men who want to date a, a Persian woman. What were those tips? Oh, I think I said, oh man, I don't remember what we I might said. have stumped it. I said something about, I cannot remember. <laughs> I remember the video. Yeah. Because I was wearing like a purple shirt or something, a button down. Mm-hmm. I think that's the one. Um, God, I cannot remember. Okay. It was Don't Lie. When you, when you meet our dads, don't touch us, don't look at us and sit on the other <laughs> side of the room. When our mums put food in front of you, don't ever say no. <laughs> Nailed it. And all still true. All, yeah. still, all still holds up. <laughs> okay, two more here. Or three more here. Okay. Um, what common and widely known positive gesture in most countries is considered an indirect, oh sorry, indecent and offensive insult in Iran? Oh, the thumbs up. Yep. Yeah. Wow, you're really good. <laughs> Okay. One, I feel like I'm, like I'm in school. I'm like, I want to get an A+. <laughs> this is, this is impressive. Yeah. Um, in a video posted on YouTube in 2018 titled Sense and Ins- Insensitivity, you read hate comments from trolls. Finish these hate comments. You are getting old, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Did they call me something in Persian? No. Oh, you're getting old? Is something about being unmarried? Marry soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. made me laugh so much. <laughs> you're getting old, marry <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah. um, and the last one for this, I love your comedy. Dot, dot, dot. But. This probably sounds like it's a but. It's probably like it's not a but. Oh, I love your comedy. Will you marry me? <laughs> you beautiful jerk. You beautiful <laughs> jerk. That's a nice one, though. I, yeah, but it's just, it's fucking hilarious. I love your comedy, you beautiful, beautiful jerk. jerk. It's just, it, yeah, it's like, like, I want to say something mean to you. It's such a bizarre Oh, my God, I remember that comment, actually. That's funny. I laughed out loud when I heard that. That was just so <laughs> beautiful funny. Beautiful jerk. Okay. Um, last time for this one. So... Same year, different video, titled this, uh, The Nation's Newest Dating App. What was, the t- what was the name of that app and how much was the upgraded presidential package? Hold on. It was called... Um, oh, my God. I have the video in my head. You got it. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Con- I think I know. Oh, don't give her a hint. Wait. Yeah, can I have a hint? No. <laughs> Um, it's not a nail. It's a. It's not a nail. It's a nail or nail. No, like a nail. Hammer? No. Oh my god, I can't remember. Screw the people. Screw the people. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god. And how much was the upgraded package? Like money wise, or what was it? No, you said basically. You said it, like there's an upgraded presidential package that you could buy on this fictitious app. Oh, and I think it's like they can like do your dry cleaning. Yeah. But how much was it? Oh my god, I don't remember. Nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. Oh my god, that's that's funny. <laughs> okay, so Screw we're people. going to. That was actually you was did good. really, really good. well. Really well. Oh my god, thank you. What was on the drink? The it, it said that even um, Iran is not known for drinking and you, and no alcohol, but there was like a. Drink oh yeah, there was Iran. a very specific. Um, uh, Are you talking about alak sagi? Yes. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, um, it's like made from raisins. Okay. Uh, and it's a really potent liquor. Get you drunk. It gets you really drunk. <laughs> I tried it for the first time. I actually didn't even try it in Iran, from what I remember. Oh no, I did try it in Iran, and I was like, this tastes like methanol, <laughs> like what I think methanol would taste like. And then or like like isopropyl alcohol. But um, I did this cooking show a couple of years ago. I was a guest on a show, and she wanted us to drink it, and I was like, I'm gonna get drunk. <laughs> and she's like, that's fine. And me and I did it with this comedian, Maz Jabrani, and we both got a little fucked up while we were shooting, <laughs> and we kind of threw a wrench in their game because she was like, I give up. I was like, I told you not to give to us. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It is amazing. All right, so we're going to play first thing that comes to mind. So I'm going to say something. Okay. And you tell me That's the it. first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Big Mouth. Netflix. That's good, yeah. <laughs> amazing. Uh, the Sags track. Shitty. Mm. 
English, a play I was in. It was a play that you were in. Yeah. Uh, Persia's Got Talent. Yellow dress. <laughs> that's what I wore. <laughs> Robin Williams. Love, adore, icon. Legend. Cried for a week when he I died. I still get, yeah. Can't handle it. Wish You Were Here. <sighs> Another play I was in. <laughs> my Immigrant Family. Sari and Ibrahim, my parents. Go. Oh, You're up again. I'm up again. <laughs> Um, now we're playing rapid fire. Yes, What's, we wait, are. Is, are they just like questions I have to answer them quickly? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you don't have to be super quick, okay. but sometimes this segment that's supposed to take a couple of minutes <laughs> takes half an hour and <laughs> it's not rapid fire. Uh, okay. okay. Let me see if I could read Hannah's handwriting. Oh, yeah. Sorry, if you were to give someone a first date tip, what would it be? Be yourself. Okay. Love it. Am I going fast enough? Keep that's going. Good. Okay. Uh, does the amount of money a man makes matter to you? No, but I want them to be stable. What about passionate? Definitely passionate, okay. but stable. Love it. Yeah. Um, what would have What would have to happen for you to walk out mid date? Walk out mid date? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like oh, what what? Some sort of blatant disrespect or misogyny, racism, something like and that. And do you actually think that you'd pull the trigger? I think I would. Yeah. I or I, I I've thought about doing this before. Like I've thought about if I was in that position before, where it would be something like I'd probably like leave money on the table and be like, "All right, I gotta go." You know, yeah. I wouldn't like storm out and make a scene, but yeah. Yeah, we always talk about it. I'm like, I don't know if I would ever be able to walk out. Maybe. I did. Wait, I did do that once in New York City. What happened? And I put cash on the table. And why did you like, walk out though? Um, he made some. This was a somebody who had expressed their feelings for me, and I said I and I had told them multiple times I don't feel that way, same way back you. for you and their next comment was very mean spirited and mm. sarcastic a little very passive aggressive and I said well I've been really honest with you I don't know why you're getting so upset with me and I can't remember what he said he said something that I was like you know what I don't deserve to be talked to that way and then um he made a comment about being out together at a place like oh, something about oh I guess I have to pay so and the thing what I, ha- I had like a five dollar slice of pie so I put a 20 on the table I was like I think that should cover it and I left I remember I called my best friend and I was like, you won't fucking believe what just happened. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Yeah. Um, okay. We got four more. Favorite comfort food? Pizza. Yeah. I love pizza. Ooh, Could have it every day. He ate it at 11 a.m. on Sunday. Oh, that's actually What's the best What's your favorite pizza spot here? Oh. Oh, my gosh. There's two places that my friends order from and I can never for the life of me remember where they are. You should try Joe's. I've in had Be- Joe's. Be- like the, Joe's the one is good. specifically I, in Beverly being Hills. Being a New Yorker, I give Joe's a thumbs up. It's yeah. the only spot that I found that was good. But mm-hmm. then Pache. That, I found. Ooh. Pache. How's that spelled? P A C E. It's oh, okay. a restaurant. Italian yeah. restaurant. Yeah. On Laurel Best Canyon, I believe it's here. delicious. And they do delivery? Mm, I don't know. It's a great go. date spot. Okay. I'm yeah. Gonna keep great that date up. spot. Keep that in mind. Um, one thing on your bucket list. Um. Oh. To star in a sitcom. What kind of sitcom? I just want like a single cam, like, you know, something that's in the vein of a modern family or an Abbott Elementary. That's, you know, that yeah. mockument. It doesn't have to be mockumentary, but that's a fun style. I don't know, something like that where you can be outside of the norm and it's like goofy and a little quirky and off kilter. Yeah. Speaking into existence. Don't yeah, it? it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Uh, what's your love language? Quality time. Um, quality time is very important to me because it makes me feel like you want to be around me. Um, quality time and like, I do like like words of, I, they say affirmation. Yeah, I just like th- th- like <laughs> being kind and stuff. Quality, and I think a lot of things fall into quality time. Like also planning fun things for us to do together or wanting, being open to exploring fun things with me that I like. Um, making making me feel like I'm someone who's important to you as well, um, and including me in your life. That to me is also part of quality time. Nice. Agreed. Yeah. I'm picturing like you in a picnic, and the guy whispers to you, "You're so special. You're so beautiful. <laughs> You're such a beautiful sweetheart." <laughs> 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 yeah, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> Your last one. Um, what inspires you most creatively? That's a really good question. Thank you. Welcome. Good job. Um, I feel like that's also a multi-part answer because I get 
You know, I actually get inspired. I mean, maybe a lot of people are like this. It's not like it's unique to me, but I get inspired by after I've had heartbreak mm-hmm. and or something we've hit rock, like after the strike, everything's like at rock bottom. And then you're like, I have all these ideas. I'm just going to do this. And it kind of, you can nowhere else to go but up. So um, that's one thing. Uh, I don't know if I see a film or a piece of art that speaks to me, a song, it sparks something in my head and I'm like, oh, and then I could do this from that and that reminds me of this thing. So I get inspired by other people, by other people's art, by other people's performances, by other, uh, by music, by concerts, by my own personal life struggles, listening to other people's uh, life struggles or anything, or wins or victories, whatever it is. Um, Yeah. Beautiful. Love it. I hope that made sense. It yeah, really did. That was perfect. Thanks. Um, back to you. This has been so <laughs> insightful, so incredible. You are, you like radiate joy and light and it's just it's very lovely to have met you. But can you let our listeners know where to find you? Yeah, I'm at, no, tell my last <laughs> read address. Um, I, on, <laughs> I'm at 5200. Um, no, I'm at, on uh, Instagram, I am Nazani Noor and on Twitter, Nazani Noor. And I'm like, Oh, my YouTube channel is, so I'm working on a new digital show that I'm in, you know, creating, producing, um, and we've already started shooting segments for it. So we'll hopefully have some segments going up within the next month or so, and that'll be on my YouTube channel, which is just my name, Nazani Noor. And we'll so plug exciting. all that. That's amazing. Oh, thank you. We must have excited. Um, happy dating. Happy thank dating. Thank you to our listeners for listening. Uh, check out our last episode, which was... Who's our Daniel Catton. Daniel Catton. And our next episode is... Peyton Knight. And please subscribe. We appreciate you. See you later. Bye.